this guy's point is, was really good. Like, Tim has no account. We talked about that earlier. News organizations do get held to account. Tim doesn't. And Tim has a fan base, too. So whereas if Tucker Carlson screwed up and left Fox News and became a YouTuber, Tucker would have a bunch of people following him. He would be even more capable of just saying whatever the fuck he wants. He's mildly held to account now. But he seemed to be more held account held to account the other day when he spoke against the conservative media and said, um, where's the evidence? Then he had to come back because people were pissed and canceling Fox. All right. Are your sources not biased? Genuine question, which, which is a good one. And then um, this guy below me mentioned most sources are at least a bit biased. I think it's fair to say, though, that Tim Pool and other independent content creators are far less biased and far more trustworthy than the corporate media establishment. I don't think I need to tell my audience why that is a silly statement, but I will tell any new audience members that is a very silly statement. Why? Because Tim Pool is an incredibly biased individual. Tim Pool has this belief that he is far more objective than any other figure in media, and yet he still peddles mostly right-leaning conspiracy theories and misinformation. And he does like he he says in that video in the beginning of the video, Tim says, um, "The dude says the mainstream media is not on your side," and then he says um, that he verifies all his information. How many times has Tim Pool retweeted something without thinking? How many times is like just on election day after? I think Tim Pool retweeted um, something that wasn't even. Uh, that was from a fake Associated Press account. So the, the guy doesn't, isn't as super caring about integrity. But I guess when you're, you know, r as rich as he is and, and have such a rabid following, you don't have to be. And of course, I have personal biases, which may skew me in certain directions at times, but I do my best to withhold judgment until there is sufficient data. In the case of this election and alleged th fraud, I think there is more than enough evidence to warrant, warrant a thorough investigation. People keep saying this, and it might sound okay, but if you look at the claims that are being made and you see how baseless they were to begin with, let alone how easily debunked they were, but if you make those baseless claims and people just eat it up. Yeah, you're you're going to make you're, people are going to think that there's enough evidence to warrant an investigation, but there wasn't. God bless America. I gave up um uh, I gave up on convincing people who unironically think online journalists like Tim Pool are are unbiased present facts. They are delusional. There's no point wasting energy. Um you know, there, there I have a hope that one day we will, we will reach these kids and we will get them to understand that there is a lot of bias from these people that they love. And I hope to be one of those online figures at some point. Like, I I plan, you know, this, this channel's new. I only have like 1,600 subs on, on YouTube, but it is my goal and my hope that I maintain integrity and some journalistic standards throughout that I will, I am honest and I have been already. I'm honest when it comes to reading something that contradicts a point that I made before. I am uh, one of the things that I, one of the claims that I made the other day was that uh, they were showing these, these voting machines last year at like DEF CON or Black Hat in Las Vegas and they were being hacked like one, technology often is back then and um and i said yeah because a company would want that to happen because that shit ends up um making their stuff more secure they take that information and they patch it and i was wrong they had buy bought that stuff off ebay i don't know if the company had refused to provide it for them but they had bought those machines off ebay and they, they were being used to hack there um so it wasn't a voluntary thing though the claim still stands that um just because they're at defcon being hacked isn't a vulnerable like it doesn't mean anything except that it's being tested and the idea that the company wasn't aware of it is silly but i was wrong in the sense that i said the, the company had allowed their stuff to be hacked and i was incorrect 
but I have no problem making those corrections because I would rather people look at me making corrections and say, hey, I really appreciate Lycan that you um, that you have that sense of integrity. Um, and the last time I saw Tim correct himself was when he retweeted the false AP thing and said, ah, you guys got me. Because it's funny and shows a little, a little bit of humor and character when you say, ah, I ended up retweeting this source. But when your whole thing is that you read each article and that you validate things before you share it, that's a crack in the facade. And that should be what people focused on. Instead, I don't think a single fucking Tim Pool fan was like, oh, gosh darn it, Tim. I think we need to be a little concerned with how you handle data. That's the goal. Tastic asks, how can you convince people who believe that any news source, even remotely left-leaning, is unreliable? What you have to do, it seems, is to talk about direct inconsistencies with the original source that they use. So the Newsmax, the OEN, Fox, whatever. And then you have to show multiple mainstream sources. You have to show the consensus in the multiple mainstream sources. And then you have to actually point out that, hey, this is a little nugget of truth in what was said. Or here is the origin and the spin that got it to the nugget that you've consumed. And you just have to draw out the bigger picture, kind of probably crazy, um, always somebody in Philadelphia style. What's the point of engaging with Tim Pool fans when they all just dismiss any evidence you present as biased? Well, that is it. Um, to answer that question, my belief is that if you engage with them in good faith, there are going to be those who are open to a differing opinion and who are going to be open to having their views challenged. Is it going to be a lot? No. But I tell you what, if out of everyone who watched this video from the Tim Pool subreddit, um, if 1% of the Tim Pool fans watched it and had a moment of clarity, a moment of self-doubt with their their beliefs, the sources that they've been using, if they had any kind of moment of introspection where they reassess their beliefs um, and, and actually, fuck, if they just clicked the article and actually read it in good faith, to me, that's good because at least I had some sort of an impact. If I made someone click an article, they normally wouldn't have. If I made someone reconsider a source as being far more valid than they are led to believe, if I made someone who normally just sees a picture like that and says, ah, yes, all of that is true, um, if I made them question that after believing it was true, I'd say that's been worth it. I do this on the side. I do this for fun. Um, any impact I could have. I, if I change one person's view a month, at, at this point, that's worth it. Yeah, the Pac-Man approach of what would it require to change your mind i i've i like that question i like that approach which is when you when you're in the argument you say okay you believe this i believe this what would you need to hear what would need to happen what data could i provide you for you to believe what i believe it, it's a very um very useful technique okay so this guy continues on um this seems like a, a pretty reasonable doesn't mean correct but reasonable approach to this discussion uh, the problem arises when some wikipedia scholar attempts to debunk and outright dismiss such evidence relying on sources that have vested interests in hiding the truth from the public like how virtually all of the mainstream ignored the hunter biden story that was shocking it's not shocking when you see that even the new york uh, I, I think even the post was uncomfortable with certain things I mean, one of those orders were there was some you know, tabloid-esque thing that was like, yeah, we know we're not touching that. Um, a lot of these places did touch it, but they touched it with fucking kid gloves because a lot of this is unverified and uncorroborated information. And a lot of it just sounded like bullshit. Denims, where? Oh, hey, you were in that debate panel with Vosh, right? I found Denim's channel earlier, and now I found you. I was. Nice to see you, not Brute Slayer. Yeah, um, Vosh's community was very nice to me. I've been, I've been hanging out in that chat a little bit. Um, now, unlike the damn checklist, I'm not saying it, uh, unlike that damn checklist, I'm not saying it's definitive 
deeply systematic fraud, but whatever impropriety has been observed should be sifted through with a fine comb so as not to disenfranchise half the country. Heck, we had a whole four years of the, like, he, he says that, but does he not have a little self-awareness to say, like, there was an entire attempt to disenfranchise the voters of Detroit? That was huge. Why not focus on that and a willingness to do that in the face of these fraudulent, well, I guess if you don't think that these are fraudulent claims or unsubstantiated, maybe fraudulent is the wrong word. Heck, we had four uh, whole years of Russian collusion narrative with zero evidence from the Democrats, even going so far as impeachment. But now that the shoe is on the other foot, everybody is acting like the election is bulletproof. Anyway, though I have my biases, I'm only interested in the truth. I ain't no dick rider. So this guy seems to be the type of person that would be open to this, right? But one, I'm not a Wikipedia scholar. I went, you know, I didn't use Wikipedia for any of these. Um, two, these people don't have interest, a vested interest. Like if there was a bombshell in Hunter Biden's, in the Hunter Biden story, every one of those outlets has a vested interest in being the first to drop that bomb or to be quick to drop a follow-up round. I don't think I went down the Joe Rogan rabbit hole because um, I don't think watching Joe Rogan ever had some serious impact on my beliefs. Joe Rogan just happened to be someone I really enjoyed. Um, did it introduce me to Jordan Peterson? Yeah. Um, but I also didn't like I didn't get weirdly red pilled or anything from Jordan Peterson. Yeah, so it, really, I don't think that the Joe Rogan thing did anything, except maybe the worst idea is that I found Gavin McInnes through that, and I had a, uh, I was in denial about how bad the Proud Boys are. This is back in like 2019, not not um, not now, but in denial about how bad the Proud Boys were and how bad Gavin himself is. Uh, Tim Pool and other established content creators are far less biased. Uh, oh, and also I, I found Tim Pool and I thought Tim Pool was this like top-notch journalist and then he flubbed the fucking Twitter conversation. And I feel like an idiot for ever thinking that. <clears throat> um, Tim Pool and other independent content creators are far less biased and far more trustworthy than corporate media establishment. Meanwhile, Tim Pool titles his videos, Democrat faces impeachment, largest militia group refuses to recognize Biden, Democrats panicking over Trump coup, blah, 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 blah. He's far less biased, uh, yet every video he has made this month is about how Trump is going to win the election. The mainstream media is trying to hurt Trump. Look at this Democrat who did a bad thing, and now the election was stolen from Trump. Have you actually watched any of these videos? Yeah, they're fucking garbage, LMAO. Mm-hmm. Now, guy could be lying. He could not have watched it, but I bet they are garbage. We'll find out when we watch that one. Why would a random YouTuber with no accountability no editorial process be more reliable than even something like Fox News or CNN, where they at least retract when they are dem demonstrably wrong. It's not like Tim doesn't have a moneyed interest in pushing a specific narrative. He just gets to ignore when he is wrong because uh, people remember hits and forget misses, like cold reading, and his fan base won't jump ship and declare him fake news as they would with a media outlet they don't like the slant of. Uh, seeing this thread, random CNN fuck-ups, opening blah, blah, blah. That's a very good point. That's something we talked about earlier. Strider, thanks for the sub, man. Uh, like, and I went through Cal Concepts. I went through the exact same arc. I still listen to Jordan Peterson's less political stuff since his uh, talks really help uh, my personal life. Jordan Peterson, this is one of the things that's important. You can't acknowledge someone's... I think it's important to acknowledge the good that some actor uh, brings while also acknowledging the bad and i think the jordan peterson self-help information is really really good and to be just flippantly dismissive of it uh, it makes me just assume that someone hasn't actually engaged with the material um how did i find you I, I remember just hearing a lot about joe rogan and then one day I decided to listen to the podcast. I was listening it to it uh, on my like hour long drive to work. And then I listened to it the entire 30 hours I spent on the road on the way to Texas, 32 hours, I think. Um, yeah, he, uh, 
I and it was just it was fun. Like it was just a dude having conversations with cool people. And some some yes, I would learn a lot. Like my view. So if you want to to sidetrack for a second, my view on things like the drug war has uh, uh drug war and drug decriminal decriminalization all that changed because of joe rogan because i um watched two episodes uh, three episodes where he had um three different figures one was an author or a journalist who had been embedded down in mexico and gave a lot of history on the mexican involvement in the drug um the drug war another guy was a dude who talked about rehabilitation and talked about like the um the origins of the drug war and just all these different aspects. And if I hadn't listened to those, my opinions might never have changed. Yeah, no, the clean your room stuff is incredibly important. Um, you know, people joke about it. It'll make his voice. It's like, clean your room, ribbit. But yeah, it's actually really good. This guy's point is, was really good. Like, Tim has no account. We talked about that earlier. News organizations do get held to account. Tim doesn't. And Tim has a fan base too. So whereas if Tucker Carlson screwed up and left Fox News and became a YouTuber, Tucker would have a bunch of people following him. He would be even more capable of just saying whatever the fuck he wants. He's mildly held to account now. But he seemed to be more held account held to account the other day when he spoke against the conservative media and said, um, where's the evidence? Then he had to come back because people were pissed and canceling Fox. Mm. Tim Pool subreddit thinks that Fox News is the enemy, which is pretty funny. Tim literally doesn't exactly report news, though. He just regurgitates what he's read on other websites, mainly the Daily Mail. If you're going to reject every source Lycan has uh, given here, I'm a little unsure what you're left to get from the news. Someone else, mainly Daily Mail. Oh, really? You sure about that? Based on my personal experience, Tim Pool videos I've watched have featured him reading a Daily Mail article. This is only actual analysis of Tim Pool sources I've seen. I'm sure you'll say it's fake, but it, uh, but it track with my personal experience anyway. Analysis, Tim exposes bias news diet. What's this? Grifter.news. <laughs> uh, where does Tim Pool do his research? Oh, I think this was like a super big study. Um, uh, the, I think the Tim Pool watchdog account tweeted this out. Um, source bias uh, defined by media bias fact check dot com. Fifty nine percent right, thirty one percent left, ten percent least biased. Tim Pool sources: Daily Mail, Fox, New York Times. Andy, no, who is that? I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Which, hey, nothing wrong. Like, I read the New York Post, or, or the New York Times, mostly, so. Interesting. Uh, like, and why do you think the Trump campaign got rid of Sidney Powell? Was she just too crazy for even them? Or, yeah, I think that the Trump campaign right now is getting, um, I think the Trump campaign is getting a lot of benefit from fomenting these crazy conspiracy theories and all that. By the way, um, not to like tank my stream, but if you're interested in the pokey drama, she just went live. Um, what, what was I answering? Why do you think Trump came in? But yeah, so like, I think she, they might've thought like she's too crazy, but what, what's upsetting to me is they can condemn her all they want, um, but they're already benefiting from everything she did and everything she came out and said. like. They have so much fear capital to capitalize on in 2022 and probably enough momentum built up from this for 2023, especially if the Democrats win the Senate and we actually get to pass some like serious reforms and changes and reverse a lot of shit. If that happens, then we are going to see a huge Tea Party 2.0 in the next couple of years. Like in Fox is kind of fucked. Uh, they found a way to alienate most Americans. Um, what do you think is next for them? Uh, lean into the Hannity Carlson wing or try to make it more legitimate? Um, I think that there is a room for a very serious reform of, uh, of conservatism and the Republican Party in the United States. I think if you get rid of a lot of the um, the religious um, dogma, I think if you get 
rid of a lot of the um, homophobia and the uh, Islamophobia, xenophobia, racism, and all that. And I say that meaning catering to the systemic, not being uh, making that part of your platform, whatever. I think if that happens, we could see a much more moderate conservative party still have some success. Um, and in turn, we can see a moderate media that still caters to it, right? Like if we were just talking about, hey, um, we're going to have immigration. How do we handle it? And one saying, well, we want open borders for everything on the left. That's, you know, open, 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 open. And the conservatives are saying, well, hold on. We want to have like these, these processes in place. And now they're just arguing about the degree of scrutiny that has to happen before someone gets their green card, shit like that. I could see that. I could see a future for that. And I can see where the media, whatever, but the media at the moment, under the current paradigm, they are benefiting off the divisiveness. Like even to CNN and the New York Times, they benefit off the divisiveness created by Fox News, by the Tim Pools of the world and the internet. So the, the, it's a, this is a pivotal moment, right? To answer your question, this is a pivotal moment where they're going to have to decide. Do they start telling the truth more? Do they tone down the spin um, and be something like reputable to a larger audience? I don't know because they also do run the ratings numbers. They But their their viewer base is, um, is going down, if I'm not mistaken. Like they're, they're up in the ratings, but like they're – catering mainly to old boomers like what 45 50 plus i don't think i don't think it strider if you're talking about tim i don't think um i don't think oh i'm sorry you're talking about uh jordan peterson never mind android says i will admit i'm biased i did a huge 180 on my politics and everyone i used to enjoy um I know C for what they are, and it makes me cringe. Uh, but while I can see Jordan B. Peterson where he's uh, wrong now, I don't see the maliciousness there that I see in others. And I, yeah, so I don't think Jordan Peterson is malicious. And I think that there is a disproportionate amount of hate towards Jordan Peterson than the actual bad that Jordan Peterson has caused at all. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that. I think that Jordan Peterson has some ideas that when I look back at it now, I'm like, oh, that's a little yikes. He's a little in, he's big in denial of intersectional feminism. But the reality is that, you know, he can be swayed. I'm sorry, not he can be swayed. I think he's an intelligent individual that if presented with someone that wasn't just someone that wanted to scream at him for his views, I think that an educated discussion about it, but I've never seen someone have that. Like I watched that interview and he owned that fucking person. He schooled that person in that interview. If we could get someone that was intelligent, educated, and wasn't there to destroy the alt-right Jordan Peterson, which Jordan Peterson isn't, isn't alt-right. Um, but that's, that's the problem, I think. He's been labeled alt-right because of his views. Intersectional feminism is the idea that there are systems and cultural norms in place that all intersect in some way to affect women. In many ways, they also affect others, like men, minorities. To me, I, I don't focus on intersectional feminism as much as I focus on intersectionality, which is just the idea, like for instance, intersectionality that negatively impacts the black community, right? Um, you can look at certain laws, you can look at the um, justice system, you can look at the way that police handle, uh, the, the way that police try to get confessions, you can look at the way that um, prosecutors don't have enough the, the public defenders, there aren't enough to go around. They're low on time. They're trying to just process people quickly as possible. Um, you can look at the judicial system when it comes to the recidivism rate. Um, and in the justice system, you can look at the recidivism rate and the lack of focus on uh, rehabilitation versus punishment. Um, there are just all these different things that in turn create a black, a, a, a problem for the black community um and so it's like you could take one out but there's still a few others causing those little um venn diagrams uh, where and some of those aren't necessarily bad so like they don't all have to be problems that overlap and cause further problems for certain people 
they can also be things that by themselves aren't bad, but when combined with a different aspect of society makes it a problem. I hope that was clear. I, uh, I haven't worked out how to explain that in any meaningful way before. Yeah, public defenders is, is a really big thing and something that I think needs to be handled much, much better. It's very sad. <clears throat> okay, let's see what else we have in, the, in this subreddit. Oh, hey, Vosh fans, here we go. Mention of you. Yeah, I do try to, uh, I do try and engage with Tim's content, and I did enjoy the Vosh Timcast. I definitely think he's a genuine person and does believe what he's saying, but he is ridiculously biased towards the right. Do you think Tim's video titles, thumbnails, are representative of his content at all? If I didn't know who he was, I'd assume this was a super extreme Trump supporter. I genuinely don't see a single title that paints Biden or Democrats in a positive light in the last 12 months. I'm not exactly sure what evidence I could provide of the Daily Mail being shit, but they generally have a pretty casual relationship with reality. And that's where you're misguided. Tim is not ridiculously biased towards the right. In fact, he's going against the grain currently and saying that he doesn't think Trump is likely to win this election, whereas many Trump supporters are still holding out and lambasting Tim for it. Tim's been very wishy-washy, by the way, with, with that. I don't give him too much credit. Anytime that there's something that has come out and, and he thought, oh, it's a, a change in the winds, he's been right there. And it's hard to say uh, much positive about Democrats or Biden when they're doing outrageously insane things, like how in California the Democrats voted to repeal the civil rights laws or low ev uh, how evidence leaked of Hunter Biden's dealing in China. First of all, Hunter Biden's thing, I don't know what this uh, civil rights repeal is in California, but Hunter Biden's deals in China and Joe Biden's for that matter are very well documented and well known. So, yeah, um, people bringing that up. We talked about it in the Glenn Beck video. Or pictures of him with a crack pipe in his mouth and the media or ignores all of it. I'm sorry, that crack pipe was all over the fucking news. And at the end of the day, Hunter Biden is running for president. And Donald Trump's been president for four years. So the threshold for scandal is a lot, what did I say, lower? I, I um, No, 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 it's, it's much higher. We need more. We need more. And Hunter's well-known drug addict son, who uh, in the public eye, Biden had a nice little victory over Trump on when Trump brought it up. And he's like, I love my son. I'm proud of him. And he fought addiction. And many, many Americans can, you know, resonate with that. Um, so the idea that this guy turns to the crack pipe thing, I just, I don't know. I don't think you understand that the entire corporate establishment is behind Biden and the fractured Democratic Party. Wall Street, big tech, the war hawks, most of the mainstream media. This is a really funny thing to see conservatives talk about because when I was growing up, it was always Democrats talking about how conservatives are in the pockets of the war machine and big tech and Wall Street. Uh, even the CCP, who are in the process of committing genocide against Uyghur Muslims. Also weird how they care about genocide on the other side of the world, but don't care about um, humanitarian violations within their own country, like on the border. Biden has been in politics for decades. He has never accomplished anything notable other than making loads of money for his own family. Trump has been in office for four years, and he has co-signed the historic peace deal between Israel and UAE, is in the process of bringing the troops back, and the economy under Trump pre-COVID was booming because he was bringing back trade. They have to throw in that pre-COVID thing and not put any consideration to the fact that Trump could have saved the economy even more had he been an actual leader during this pandemic. Truth be told, there isn't much good to be said about democrats their party is at war with itself as the saying goes the left eats itself um true very true and that's where you're misguided blah, blah, blah. Uh, media bias is usually more about what they report oh jesus christ this is a paragraph media bias is usually more about what they report but they don't report rather and the validity they give to certain news over others rather than the actual factuality of what they're reporting. Everything you report can be 100% true and you can still be biased. CNN or Fox has rarely ever reported actually false news. They're still biased. Uh, there is literally no path to victory for Trump right now. This shouldn't be a hot take for anyone with a connection to reality. If someone reads the BBC or Reuters, they're generally going to come away with a pretty accurate and well-informed view on reality. If they watch Tim Pool, they really aren't. 
same as if they watch CNN. So this is all like just more of the same. Uh, let's see if there's any other thing, any idea that we haven't engaged with. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure what I was expecting from this because a lot of it is just your sources. Like this, I think I agree with the video, but most of his sources are not reliable news sources. What is a reliable news source? Hell if I know. So he gives himself a little more of a, a leg to stand on and says, I think I agree with most of this, but these are not good sources. What is? I don't know. Kind of anticipates that question. Let's see what we get. Easy. Politico, Axios, the BBC, they tend to mostly be mostly reliable in accuracy and very centrist in the slant they give to their stories. Really, dude? BBC? Centrist? Accurate? I will say as a Republican, a former Republican, BBC was one that I also believed was, yeah, I was like, yeah, I could get down with BBC and, oh, okay. That wasn't a hard fucking thing to take. Um, 90 Breeze, like in the Israel, 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 UAE deal is not as big of a deal as people are trying to make of this. I, I am not commenting much on it because I don't, I haven't actually followed it, so I don't know. Um, and I, I need to educate myself more on the deal, but this is my own problem. Uh, I, I just, when people are trying to give Trump credit for it, it's like, it's hard to really think that Trump really brokered any kind of, um, diplomacy between those two countries and that it wasn't all either that either it's not as big a deal like you're saying, or that Trump didn't have as big a hand in it. Right. And I try to, even when it's someone that I like, I try to not give them more credit than they deserve. But uh, but just saying that BBC is, um, the, these dudes, uh, yeah. Is this dude talking about the Moors? These are the dudes that said England was filled with Africans in the Middle Ages. Is he talking about the Moors? He might be. All right, so look at the reaction to this. Like, Politico, Axios, and BBC are three really good media entities. But they don't say the things that these weirdos like. You definitely look like the kind of person that would make an hour and 41 minute debunking video. Listen, I know I'm not the prettiest guy in the world, but I'm not sure what that means. Do I look like a spaz? Do I look like a, like a, a freak who has nothing better to do than than debunk conservative conspiracy theories? Uh, if so, then okay. Not sure where we're going there. Like in Israel, a, a diplomatic mission in the Emirates back in 2005. Uh, this deal was a long time coming. It wasn't dependent on the U.S. If anything, it's COVID and cybersecurity that accelerated it. And that doesn't sound unreasonable. I remember Obama getting a lot of credit for a lot of things that uh, that uh, who did that uh, that Bush had set into motion. So I mean that, that's that's a thing that we see a lot of. Is it bunker? Uh-oh, people are invading. This might be it, boys. Oh, yeah. No, okay. I remember that. So this is another invading comment. You guys are oddly unwelcoming to different perspectives. You don't think that might be a problem? I'm totally... Excuse me. I'm totally fine with it, but I'm just uh, scared of this turning into a Dave Rubin sub where it's all full of literal haters of Dave and everyone. But you're also just saying absolute false things. So, you know, I like perspectives, not lies. What the fuck? I didn't even see that comment. How are the false things? Don't engage with that, of course. Um, oh, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> um, I don't know how the people on that sub have so much time to, uh, to hate so much. Don't they get tired, have jobs? But they're talking about the Dave sub, I think. Is there a bot, uh, bot to print this? I'd like that. Um, yeah, so the invading thing like look how protective they are of the space so a bunch of users at once going to left-wing subs is brigading but a right-wing sub being invaded is just unwelcoming so this is replying to me when you pose a bad quick faith question like this it makes it hard to take your video seriously it makes me more believe you are just trolling and don't care if what you say is true or not i mean at the end of the day all you did was read a bunch of mainstream media articles not exactly a high effort video no i just had to hunt down those articles and actually take the time to go through them and in, I did add commentary to point out the important parts that specifically refute 
the dumb fucking claims. So sure, it wasn't a high effort video. I won't pretend it was. It's not like the Glenn Beck video where I actually sat for eight hours and fucking researched every nuanced aspect of every dumb fucking thing he said. But the idea that um, my question is bad faith, when I say you don't think it might be a problem that you are unwelcoming to different perspectives, you guys have borne witness to all the downvoted comments, which many of which are just saying, can you, can you be a little more clear about what you think is an unbiased source? Jesus Christ. Uh, this guy got trounced by Rob Knorr on the Hippie Dippy podcast. I'm not even going to bother wasting my time here. No, I didn't get trounced. Rob was very nice to engage with, but Rob was also espousing conspiracy theories. Rob was saying things that were unsubstantiated, and Rob was giving way too much credit to bullshit. So the trouncing was just me allowing Vosh to refute instead of doing it myself. Actually, there's no point in that thing where I thought I got refuted at all, if I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah, but, you know, I'm happy to be corrected. Yeah, this sub is out of control. Too many banner waivers, uh, and the conflict is just too depressing for me to bear. I don't know what he's talking about here. Uh, how do we report content creators self-promoting? Oh, I didn't see this. They, they do want to get me banned. So after your segment on uh, Benford's Law, so this one actually gave me a bit of thought, but someone already went through it. So after your segment on Benford's Law, so for those who are playing along at home, uh, Benford's Law is this idea that certain number patterns exist and they have to do with the way digits start and some other shit. And like the IRS uses it to find irregularities in, in tax ledgers so that they can go audit people, right? So the idea is that certain reporting doesn't follow Bedford's law, and therefore it's suspicious and needs to be looked at. Um, so this guy says, blah, 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 blah. Since as you so eloquently read, the IRS does indeed use it as a red flag, which would imply they find a correlation there. I'll agree it's not proof, but from what you read, it sounds like it is generally accepted as grounds to open an investigation, which would require delay of certification. They say no evidence all day, every day, but it seems there is indeed evidence. So he says, I will agree it's not proof, but then he's saying, um, but it seems there is indeed evidence. That's contradictory in itself. So I say, so going off my experience with taxes and what that article says, the reason the IRS uses it is because humans making up numbers in a ledger are likely to not account for this irregularity. The IRS uses it as a flag to further investigate. That's not evidence. That's a, sing a signal to be more suspicious. Then the experts who commented in the article said that the type of pattern irregularity in this situation isn't evidence of election problems either. So it's on the people accusing the state of having rigged an election to show proof otherwise. Until then, no, there's no evidence. And then he breaks it down and he says, I'm not disparaging Reuters because they usually do pretty good. That's a weird acknowledgement from this subreddit, though I don't think he'd be making that acknowledgement if he couldn't continue further with what he's about to say. But note what they did here. They quoted an academic study linked here. Here's the PDF, which... Uh, I don't know if we can actually see the whole thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, the test is worth taking seriously as a statistical test for election fraud. And in any case, the 2BL test on its own should not be... S Hold on one second. Just to watch a bunch, bunch of people get nuked. And in any case, the 2BL test on its own should not be considered proof either that election fraud has occurred or that an election was clean. A significant 2BL test result can be caused by complications other than fraud. Some kinds of fraud the 2BL test cannot detect. Here's the full context. Uh, the good news is that as measured by the 2BL test, signs of election fraud in recent American presidential um, votes seem to be rare. Several of the places that turn up with significantly large 2BL test statistics have been notorious for a century or more. That the 2BL test finds these places suggests it is probably on to something. Um, these results using data from actual American elections tend to reinforce the simulation of results uh, of Mabane 2006 that show the 2BL test can spot many patterns of manipulation in vote counts. A significant 2BL test result is not in itself proof of fraud. The person says, again, not proof is clearly stated, but this seems to be evidence, at the very least, circumstantial evidence. I'm sorry. I need, um, Maybe I'm, I'm being an idiot. Evidence. Definition. 
uh, that which tends to prove or disprove. So that which tends to. So maybe I'm being pedantic by saying um, you can't say that it's not proof, but it is evidence. Uh, so Reuters makes the exact same mistake you did. They are complaining proof and evidence, blah, 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 blah. I want to go into this further. I do want to because he actually made an effort compared to everyone else in the subreddit. I think this is the first time I was ever actually really engaged with the source. Now, I also did say this during my video. I'm like, cool, if you're going to take one or two of these as the end all be all, I don't think any of these alone would stand on on themselves as a reason to really think of anything. Once you understand the context of it all. But then he gets a response, uh, Walter Mel Mabane, whose paper you are referencing to try to use as a piece of evidence, recently wrote how there is no evidence of election fraud and you cannot use Benford's law in U.S. elections this way. And that was the point of the article in Reuters, is that you can't use it this way. And then this guy responds with, do you not find it odd that before this election he said it was useful in U.S. elections, but post-election that changed from his previous paper? So now he's not really focusing on the part where now he's saying it's not he only wants to listen to him when he agrees with him and this guy says no uh, because he specifically used the 2bl test in his original paper and is refuting the application of the 1bl test that so many wannabe statisticians are using to prove fraud now also there are papers that criticize his original work and now that benford's law is useless in detecting uh fraud and he links cambridge um i don't know if that's the actual university of cambridge though Cambridge University Press. Uh, I just find it funny that so many people who don't care, who don't actually understand Benford's law are just parroting some other dumb fuck uh, are trying to apply it. So that's the biggest takeaway for me. My view is that I had no idea what Benford's law was until this mathematical impossibility claim was brought up. So we went into it and you have to, to some degree trust the experts and you have to trust consensus because you're going to find experts that don't agree with you. You're going to find experts that agree with a, a different opinion or whatnot, but you are better off trusting consensus in these cases because consensus will propagate itself throughout um, mainstream thought eventually. Is anyone going to respond to any of this? The sub voted that fraud confirmed post pretty hard. This is one of the first comments from that day. And it's very true. No one's really acknowledging it. Um, yeah, so this guy's just calling it out and saying a lot of these sources are biased, blah, 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 blah. Huh. So his sources are biased, but that's not the issue. Tim's sources are also biased and often not in favor of his personal views. The problem with this Lycan fella, this Lycan fella, is that he obviously set out to make a debunked video instead of investigating the issues and digging for the truth. What the fuck is the difference? If I'm making a video to debunk, I'm obviously looking to make some sense of the truth and expose it. Uh, what you're seeing now is simple confirmation bias. You begin with it. You begin with an already established conclusion, and all that's left to do is just fill in the gaps, which is easier than ever with the internet. Did you watch the whole video? He did not question any of what he read from any of those damn articles. Absolute certainty is a red flag. If he's too lazy to be skeptical, then why should we take him seriously? Because skepticism in the face of established journalism is something that you must wield with great care, because otherwise you end up down a rat hole that leads you to bullshit sources like OAN and Newsmax. Tim sources are, are also blah, blah, blah. Have you seen his content, lady? I was sick of Russia, Russia, Russia as much as he was, but I've been hearing about election impropriety every day on all of his channels for the past 21 days. When it happened with the Dems, it was Russia 2, Electric Boogaloo. Now it's, hey, we need to look into this stuff. Treat it with the same skepticism or don't. He'll say, we had to sit through Russia while ignoring the fact that he constantly scoffed at every article. What are you seeing now is simple confirmation bias. Uh, what I'm seeing is one person with a bias presenting bias sources against another biased person presenting bias sources. I'm a dude pretending to be another dude who's playing another dude in a movie. Hell, Tim's got a video up today that says, new survey proves media lies and censorship stole Trump's re-election victory from a single poll that he backs up with an anecdote. His intro is him talking about hyper-partisanship, driving content, and clicks while saying, we knew the game was rigged from the start. I don't like the part where he calls me a 
biased person presenting biased sources. But for the most part, this comment rightly calls out Tim. Mm. I just spilled water on myself. <clears throat> And then the uh, I have to watch this in chunks, but it looks high quality so far. So I get a compliment that gets downvoted to shit. Uh, my thing sources gets downvoted to shit. Wow, what a surprise! Memes on the far right subreddit don't have accurate information. That's a shocker. Oh shit! It's Lichen. Someone is excited to see me. Boom. Fuck you. Fuck that. Fearless soldier kills the sub by literally being a child. You can't expect him to understand anything properly. The mods are complete shit, and obvious trolls are really the backbone of this Reddit. Tardy Tim fans can't think with their head for one minute. An incoming fake news post. Yes, we saw a lot of that. So um, I think this is going to wrap up the Tim Pool segment of the show, which is, in short, oh, wow, what a fucking nut um, these people can be. It's very... Um, I want to I want to highlight the difference. Now, obviously, Destiny subreddit is going to have a way different view on this shit. But I mean, look at this. Like the 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 upvote to comment ratio. The comments are are pretty good and engaged. Um, like, but it's not the just the real dumb. Sh oh man. Oh, okay. I remember what that said. Anyway, like I I don't need my dick sucked, but I do want some semblance of objective engagement and we got it from that one guy and i do genuinely plan to go further into what he was saying but you know from the comment i think that guy um i'm going to assume again because i rely on the mainstream media to to be as honest as it is i'm going to assume that reuters did a pretty decent job interpreting that and the fact that the guy said himself the guy who the dude was originally referencing said himself now that cannot be used in this context I'm going to trust that. Um, anyway, with that, I am thinking that since we've done it, we've done two hours. Um, there's some like pokey drama and shit going on. So we'll save the Tim Pool video for tomorrow. So this will be, um, I'm going to, I'll bookmark that. Oh, let's see. I'll bookmark that and we will check that out tomorrow and whatnot. Yeah, no, the fact that I have 70 viewers right now um, while Destiny's doing his drama stream is actually amazing. So that that's actually I, I'm really excited about that because I, uh, I usually lose almost all my viewers when daddy goes live. So um, <laughs> Ooh, I like that Yoshi thing. Is that a trihex? Ooh, I like that a lot. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really want to say I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and watch this Tim Pool video in advance so that we can have some real uh, less Googling and clicking and unpolished discussion and more. Um, yeah. So hopefully this can also get condensed into a much shorter video. So thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you subbed, I very much appreciate it. We'll get those alerts fixed if you are... Um, if you followed today, I also want to say thank you for that. I hope you tune in tomorrow. I usually stream in the morning. And yeah, with that, thank you all so much. I greatly appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. If you're American, enjoy Thanksgiving, but do it safe. I canceled my trip home today. My mom wasn't too happy about it. You guys have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. My name is Lachin. Please subscribe to my channel, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. I need your subs and I need your support so I can grow my shit bigger. Please, oh please, I don't need donations. Just need your follows and adorations. Please, 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 please like, subscribe, and follow.